Okay, this is a video for Open Source Resilient Living. It's an overview of my uh, aquaponic system that I'm building. Um, right here we have it uh, a bubbler. We have two pumps. And um, the, uh, so anyways, here's my bubbler. It is a air pump. The, um, we just got it covered up here for the rain. We have this is the top tank. Two bubbler. Uh, two. The bubbler has uh, two uh, hoses that uh, pump air into it. Uh, it goes into the second tank here, and then down to the third tank. It's like a series of steps, and fourth tank. We have a second pump here to aerate. This, uh, this pump will probably be used to, to uh, power the aquaponics uh, uh, set up to, to put the water up into the grow beds, but for right now I'm just using it to aerate, uh, aerate the uh, pond. And then here is the last, last tank. Um, the, we pumped most of the water out and then uh, refilled it and uh, it's about 25% uh, 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 well water and uh, the rest is uh, rain water since, uh, since we got the rain. This is pretty deep. It's about uh, four feet deep or so. Um, it actually goes down below the street level right here because of the uh, gradient and how we designed everything. Um, we originally got this for uh, to do our goldfish, as a home for our goldfish, but that was years ago and it didn't work out. And um, originally we had this had the water circulating in here with a uh, um, sump pump, but the sump pump used a ton of electricity, so we ended up uh, not using it that much, and just turning it on every now and then which of course killed all the fish and we also had a lot of problems with the uh, getting the the uh, bacteria cycle working uh, with this so um, we ended up just uh, you know kind of abandoning it for a while um, right now there's uh, just uh, there is some wildlife in the in the pond um, it is uh, full of tadpoles which uh, have been producing plenty of waste to, uh, and they've been feeding on the algae to uh, get the bacteria cycle in here going good before we uh, start running the plants. Um, I'm pretty sure that our bacteria cycle here is, uh, the bacteria in here is uh, set up pretty good right now. The uh, most, this is, uh, hasn't been really cleaned out or anything bleached or anything like that and uh, quite a long time and the the tadpoles and frogs have been in here for uh, months now um, doing their thing but you know this is our first time we actually ran and aerated it and and everything for the last uh, you know for about over a year um, so anyways this is the setup we are using a three-quarter inch garden hose for the uh, for the uh, system, the just uh, we just get it from the uh, local hardware store. It's pretty cheap. Um, these plants right here, uh, they will be uh, moved, transplanted someplace else um, to make access to the uh, system much easier. And we're also going to uh, turn this into our gravel bed. Um, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to be doing it with the gravel bed but uh, we're gonna figure something out with this um, this is our wife's we got uh, plants growing on the edge so we actually water right now for, with water from the the uh, from the the aquaponic system there are orchids um, and the orchids are in bloom Probably the orchids will be uh, watered from the system also once we get everything uh, set up. 
uh, you know, since we're in a tropical climate here, it seldom goes below uh, 22 degrees Celsius or about 72 degrees, 73 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, it's perfect uh, climate for orchids. Um, and anyways, that is it. So I hope you enjoy this. Enjoy my little bit of the beginning of my adventure here in aquaponic. Now here's update on the other side of the aquaponic system. Um, we the plants are going to be going down this fence right here. Uh, in the distance, that's my uh, chicken future chicken coop. Um, this is approximately, I am six feet tall, and uh, this is approximately uh, just a hair under six feet, um, six feet high. And so we got enough room for four bottles. Um, here is the painted and cut bottles that I have done so far. They've been uh, drilled, cut, and painted. Um, not quite as fancy as Fabio's setup, but we try. <laughs> so anyways, and moving on, here is a quick uh, peek at the chicken future chicken coop here made with uh, coconut lumber this is about two meters high and um, this will be enclosed with netting and uh, set up for the chickens um, if you I don't know if the camera can pick up the sound but this is our chickens from the neighbor um, we have a homeowner's association that prohibits chickens inside the fence, but, you know, what they don't see can't hurt them. The um, only thing that's holding back uh, moving everything right now is the uh, moving the uh, clothesline, our uh, eco-friendly, um, you know, clothes dryer. And also, to give a little more tour of the backyard, we have um, the, uh, our coconuts from our coconut tree. This is our first crop uh, uh, from this one and this is a different breed They're called a dwarf coconut. We have approximately uh, a good amount of uh, coconuts coming in on, the, in, in on this one. I think there's five. So five or six so far coconuts coming in. So anyways this is the overview. The backyard there's my uh, rocket stove we've been experimenting with um, part this morning and then it got so hot out and I just had to it drove me back inside and then uh, here is the back door to my shop and the washing area we just got one coat of paint on the back door but anyways, that is it